we know that air comes into uh, the alveoli and gas exchange occurs. We know that there's a high concentration of oxygen. So when air comes in, okay, we're going to make that air nice and red because oxygenated is red. So a high concentration of oxygen comes in, okay, mixed into the air. That means there's a high amount of O2 in that air, right? And right now there's a really small amount of CO2. Okay, we're going to do the CO2 in blue. So right now there's a very small amount of CO2 mixed into that air. We're looking at something like 21% of oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide. That's not a lot. So there's a higher concentration of oxygen right now in the alveolus. And that becomes very, very important when we start talking about that blood vessel that hugs the alveolus. So the little circles in that blood vessel actually represent the red blood cells. And we know from our nutrient section that the purpose of red blood cells is to carry oxygen to and from the cells. Okay, carries oxygen to the cells, carries carbon dioxide from the cells back to the lungs. Okay, and it does this because of iron. There's a lot of iron in the protein hemoglobin, which is responsible in the red blood cell for capturing that oxygen and holding on to it. So these purple red blood cells, I drew them in purple because they have lots of CO2. Every one of these has CO2 is a very high concentration. It's just come back from the body and it's going to the lungs to get rid of its CO2 and take oxygen. So all of these red blood cells that are rich in CO2 have a much higher concentration of CO2 than the actual alveolus does. Remember, a very small amount 0.04% of CO2 is in the air that we breathe, okay? So there's a much higher concentration of CO2 in those blood cells right now. And we know that things always want to go from an area where there's a high concentration to an area where there's a low concentration. This implies that all of this CO2 is going to make its way, it's going to cross this very thin barrier, okay? And as they keep moving in this general direction and they hug the alveolus, they're going to dump off their carbon dioxide, okay? So that is going to increase the concentration of carbon dioxide into the actual lungs. So CO2 levels are going to go up. And when there's too much CO2, that's going to cause the actual lung to work towards exhaling that CO2. The CO2 will leave the alveolus. Okay, meanwhile, there's still oxygen in the alveolus. So what ends up happening here is because there's a higher, and this is happening simultaneously. Okay, the CO2 is leaving and the O2 is going in. It's like they're just swapping places, all right? So what happens here, because there's a high concentration of O2 in the alveolus and a low concentration in the red blood cells, it actually then crosses that barrier through diffusion and it oxygenates every one of these cells, okay? All of these cells will have lots of oxygen in them and they will actually be going towards the body. They'll eventually get back to the body. The blue side here is coming from the body and the red side is going to go at some point. It has to make a pit stop at the heart first, which we'll learn about later, but it's going to go back to the body and it's gonna bring all of that oxygen to every cell in the body so that each one of those cells can carry out cellular respiration. 
Because without oxygen, there's no cellular respiration. There is no development of energy. Okay, there's no breakdown of glucose. Remember when we talked about diffusion and osmosis in the digestive system. Okay, minerals diffuse across the barrier in the large intestine, followed by water, which undergoes osmosis. Diffusion and osmosis, when things go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, just like pressure going from you know, high pressure to low pressure, which is what causes inhalation and exhalation, we use these concentration gradients because they're a form of passive transport. Passive transport means it does not cost any energy. And when you think about all of the key things that happen in the body that happen because of passive transport, because of something going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration or high pressure to low pressure and vice versa, a lot of our vital things that, that our body is able to do to maintain life happen and they don't cost us energy. That is what adds to us as being a somewhat more efficient organism than, let's say, bacteria. <laughs>